Albert Einstein and the Barriers of Mental Disorders Albert Einstein was a physicist from Germany who lived during the late 1800s. He, and probably many more from his time, had some sort of mental disorder without a proper diagnosis. Not much was known about mental health at the time, but many experts have been able to link Einstein's symptoms to mental disorders. Behavioral analysts are a type of therapist that focuses on improving social skills, communication, and academics. Many of them have and still do study Albert Einstein and his mental disorders to help them better understand the restrictions of mental disorders and how to help patients overcome them. Delayed speech is one of the main symptoms that people with ASD or Autism Spectrum Disorder experience. Einstein experienced not only this symptom of ASD, but 16 others outlined by the DSM or Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. For example, Einstein created a strict set of rules for his wife to follow, like three meals served to his room every day and specific rules for organizing and cleaning his desk. His rules portray one of the symptoms for ASD, insistence on sameness, inflexible adherence to routines, or ritualized patterns specified in the DSM. As a lecturer, Einstein confused many people with his difficulty with small talk. Einstein preferred to spend his time alone, sailing and thinking rather than socializing, but he was able to create enough small talk to have many affairs during his first marriage. He wasn't comfortable around other people for the most part. People from Einstein's time viewed him as an outgoing genius, but it is believed by many modern experts that he was one of the many people who suffered from mild autism before people knew that autism was a thing. There are ties between genius and autism that are not very known, but are there. Just the fact that many, maybe all of the outgoing geniuses from the past could be linked tells us that this is an aged but important connection. One thing that separates them from average or neurotypical people is their brain structure. Sometimes their brains could have denser tissue or also, in Einstein's case, a fourth parietal lobe. Brains that belong to geniuses may also be wired to be autistic. In 2015, researchers from Ohio State University conducted an experiment that proved that there is a possible chromosomal link between genius and autism. Families that are more expected to have autistic kids are more expected to have geniuses. The similarities are not equal, but the study provided more facts and reasons to believe that not only Einstein, but many other geniuses could have been autistic. Many who have studied Einstein believe he had ADD, or Attention Deficit Disorder. Some of the symptoms he had were delayed speech or mental maturity because he was slow to talk and read, inattention because he got in trouble in school and college for not paying attention, poor memory because he was always forgetting things, and we can also tell that he had bad memory because he was always looking unprepared. Einstein was also disorganized, which can be proven by pictures of his very messy desk. Einstein was born on March 14, 1879 in Ulm, Germany. He was Hermann and Pauline's second child. He was slow to talk, starting when he was about four, but even then sang sentences under his breath before saying them out loud. This displays his ASD, or Autism Spectrum Disorder, because of his symptoms, difficulty, and development. His first scientific experience was when he was four or five. His father showed him a pocket compass, and Einstein loved the way that no matter where the compass was pointing, the needle pointed north. From that point forward, he always showed his love for science and problem solving, even before he started school. Einstein started school when he was six years old. His first school was a Catholic elementary school in Munich called Peterschule on Blumenstrasse. His parents weren't very focused on religion, so they cared more about the academic side of the school rather than the religious part. Einstein was a good student, but was very shy and didn't talk to his classmates. He didn't like the fact that the school forced the students to be very obedient and almost militant-like. This shows his symptoms of ADD. He much rather preferred to be at home building houses made of cards with his sister. When Einstein was 10, he was accepted into an institution in Munich called Ludopol Gymnasium. 
This institution focused more on Greek and Latin instead of math and science. Since he preferred math and science over Greek or Latin, Einstein started to create a habit of setting his favorite subjects at home outside of school. His uncle Jacob let Einstein use his books on algebra and math to study and solve puzzles. One of Einstein's family friends, a 21-year-old medical student named Max Tullman, also let him use his books on science and philosophy, other subjects that Einstein very much liked. Einstein's family decided to move to Milan in June 1894, but Einstein stayed in Munich so that he could finish his education at the Ludopol Gymnasium. A couple of months after that, Einstein changes his mind, drops out of the gymnasium, and goes to live with his family in Milan. Einstein didn't pass the entrance exams for the Swiss Polytechnic because of zoology, botanics, and French, as he was not good with language. This shows his ASD. Later, Einstein was accepted to the trade department of the Cantonal School in Aarau, Switzerland. He started living with the family of Jost Winsler, a teacher in Aarau. In October 1896, Einstein began studying at the Zurich Polytechnic in a teacher's training program. After four years of training, in July of 1900, Einstein received his diploma as a mathematics teacher and started working on his doctoral thesis. When Einstein started teaching, many would think that he wouldn't have time for his studies, but he proved them wrong. He didn't stop studying physics. In fact, he still studied it very seriously in the laboratory that belonged to the head of the physics department at the Polytechnic, Henrik Frederick Weber. Henrik Frederick Weber was best known for his discoveries that helped in the advancements of electrical engineering. Einstein admired the professor but couldn't understand how one could be so ignorant to the advancements in electricity and magnetism that happened since Hemholtz's discoveries in the 1850s. Just like when he was in high school, Einstein depended on his studies. He used sources like the sources of Maxwell, Kirchhoff, Hertz, Hemholtz, and contemporary physicists. The discoveries of the mathematics lecturer Hermann Minkowski would also help in coming up with a complicated math formula to prove Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein met his first wife, Moliva Merrick, at the Polytechnic. They would soon have three children together. Einstein then completed his quantum theory on March 17, 1905. Due to his newfound success, Einstein and Maliva started drifting apart. They ended up divorcing on February 14, 1919. Einstein had problems with his lack of affection, but he was able to have many affairs during his first marriage. Einstein then married his cousin Elsa on June 2, 1919. From April 2 to May 30, 1921, Einstein visited the U.S. for the first time on a fundraising tour for the opening of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. The next year, on November 9, he won the Nobel Prize for his quantum theory. All of the money from the prize went to his first wife, Maliva. Einstein came from a Jewish family, so when the Nazis took over Germany in 1933, Einstein fled to the U.S. and renounced his German citizenship. Elsa died December 20th the same year. During this time, an atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, which left Einstein in Great Depression because he was a pacifist and he felt his developments with quantum mechanics helped in the advancement of atomic bombs. Einstein continued living in Princeton, New Jersey until the end of his life. That also displayed his ASD because he never wanted to move around the U.S. to see the other states. Einstein died on April 18, 1955 of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. He could have lived longer with surgery, but Einstein declined, saying, I want to go when I want. It's tasteless to prolong life artificially. I've done my share. It's time to go. I will do it elegantly. When Einstein was being autopsied, pathologist Thomas Harvey took his brain for studying, cut it into 240 pieces, and preserved it in celluloid, a hardened, rubbery form of cellulose. Einstein didn't want any research published on his brain or body because he didn't want to be worshipped. Harvey took the brain anyways and later asked Hans Einstein, Einstein's son, if he could do research on it. Hans said yes if the research was done for scientific purposes only. After studying Einstein's brain, we found that his parietal lobes are 15% wider, his corpus callosum, the connection between the right and left brain, has more bundles of nerves, and certain ridges were missing on the outside of his brain. 
You can now find Einstein's brain at the Muter Museum in Philadelphia. Many should hear this story so that we can better understand and develop ways to overcome these disorders through different teaching systems. Albert Einstein broke those barriers many years ago, but many people still battle with those barriers every day.